All right, so uh, let's look at this second topic now. Um, and you can see that I, I already did it to make sure I knew how to do it. But this is about finding X and Y intercepts and how we can do that without actually physically seeing it on a graph. All right, and so there's a really simple way to, uh, to kind of conceptualize this and, and understand this. So I'm going to do a different screen share, go to Cami for you guys so you can follow along with that. All right, so um, the thing to think about here, all right, and then this will help you remember how to do this, is that if you've got a graph, right, and you've got a line, and let's say that this is my line right here, your X and Y intercepts, so your X intercept would be here, that's where it crosses your X axis, right, and your Y intercept is right there. Now, for your X intercept, Think about, okay, it, it's gonna be whatever X is. So I'm just gonna write it as X. It could be, in this case, it's a negative number, right? So it'd be X and then your Y coordinate right here is gonna be zero because it's on the X axis. So your, your up and down coordinate is zero, right? And it's the same thing for Y, except it gets reversed, right? You got whatever Y is and then your X coordinate is zero. And so, if we look at these and we look at this equation, we can actually use this to help us quite simply find what these intercepts are. So let's take this equation. So I got four X minus six Y equals 12. And let's find my X intercept. Well, my X intercept is gonna, I'm gonna take this, right? And I'm gonna look at that and I'm gonna say, well, I know that Y is zero. So I'm gonna find what wherever Y is in this equation. And I'm gonna go four X minus, six and I'm gonna put zero in for Y. And this really neat thing happens where it goes away because six times zero is zero, right? You wind up with four X equals 12. And then you can just solve for X by dividing both sides by four and you get X equals three. And then you can do pretty much the exact same thing with, uh, with Y, right? You take your equation, so we got four X, minus six Y equals 12. I'm gonna put zero in for X. So it's gonna be four times zero minus six Y equals 12, not 72, like it kind of looks there. Um, four times zero cancels out, right? Zero, and it just goes away. And you're left with negative six Y equals 12. Well, that's something we know how to solve. And we know that we just divide by whatever the coefficient is and the coefficient's negative six. So divide both sides by negative six. And then you get y is equal to negative two. And then I would just, for my x-intercept, I would say, well, that's three. For my y-intercept, I would put in negative two. All right, let's try one more. All right, so for this one, same, same concept. So I'm to, find, to solve for my, my x-intercept, right? So to solve for your x-intercept, you're gonna make y equal to zero. And to solve for your y-intercept, you're gonna make x equal to zero. It's kind of like you make the opposite thing zero. So for my x-intercept, it's four x, because I don't know what x is yet, plus seven times zero equals negative 28. Well, that goes away. You get four x equals negative 28. Divide both sides by four, because that's the opposite of what's being done. You get x is equal to negative seven. So I'll put negative seven right in here. And then for your y-intercept, we're going to make x equal to zero. So it would be four times zero plus seven y equals negative 28. So that goes away. You get seven y equals negative 28. Divide both sides by seven and you get y equals negative four. So it's, it's a fairly simple process. If you can kind of just keep in mind that where when something crosses an axis, an axis, the other coordinate is zero. So when it crosses the x axis, your y coordinate is zero. When it crosses the y axis, your x coordinate is zero. And if you can remember that, you can kind of intuit this and sort of figure it out. So hope this is helpful.